Hello, welcome to the Gonzo Ewok channel. I'm Ewok and today I'm playing Stellaris. Oh, welcome back to the Gonzo Ewok channel, if you've been here before. I'm still Ewok and I'm still playing Stellaris. I want to crack up from where I left off in the last episode, where I created the Armed Karelian Nations, a nation of xenophobic, militaristic slavers. Yeah. So uh, we're going to conquer the galaxy. Probably not in this episode, but you know. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, just a reminder, as I say, xenophobic, militarist, and authoritarian, which means I like slavery. Um, I'm playing on a small galaxy with no fallen empires. Uh, so it's just my peers. Um, I've already set my policies and things like that, so it's time to just get going. I'm just gonna pop things on normal speed. Um, whilst I start my initial build. Obviously the first thing to do is survey this system. I've already set my science going at the back, back end of the last episode. And we'll build a couple of corvettes because I'm a militarist. And militarists like militaristic kind of stuff. So if you remember, I set my guys up so they were going to be really good at collecting minerals. Uh, so I started on plus 13 minerals, which is a decent start. If you look at the bonuses to that uh, that particular pop who's enslaved and collecting minerals, so plus 15% for being industrious, plus 5% for being strong, plus 10% for slavery, plus 10% for slavers guild, plus 10% for mining's guild. So that is what, that's a whopping 50% is that? Yeah, that's a 50% increase in the amount of minerals that these dudes are producing, which is pretty cool. It's pretty good going. Um, in terms of food, they're not, not great at doing food. They get a bit of a bonus at doing food, plus 20%. Well, on the whole, I feel like my guys are gonna be quite productive. It should help us get a good start, particularly let us boost our military up quite quickly. I mean, I think this is the earliest in the game I've ever built a corvette. Normally I build a second science ship. Be a good idea to recruit an admiral, maybe? Yeah, he's pretty good. Obviously, it's a naval armada. So I think one thing I'm going to have to be careful about is that I don't fall behind in energy too quickly. So I may make it so that my second pop it's going to work on an energy tile when he eventually grows. It would be handy if I could get some energy stations in my initial space. But you can't have everything. I'm just scoping out my initial surroundings there to see where I'm likely to encounter other races. It seems there's going to be a glut of stuff around here. If there's another race along here, then they'll be in an excellent defensive position. Not that I'm too worried about that. 
I mean, even though I am going sort of heavy militarist, it's going to be a while before we're in the position to actually do war anyway. Um, given that military stations have a 1k fleet strength and my current navy has a 140 fleet strength and it's at like one third maximum capacity anyway. Take a look at my ruler. So my ruler has an investor and reformer. It gets plus ten percent any credits, plus ten percent monthly unity. Next election will be on his death, and I get cheaper and more effective military stations from his agendas. Which is absolutely useless since I don't have the technology or the inclination to build any military stations anyway. Military stations would imply defence. And I'm a very offensive kind of guy. Right, I think it's safe to whack this up to fast now. Where we get our initial infrastructure set up. By chance we've stumbled on a faint alien signal during the survey of this planet. It appears to be a small object in orbit. It contains no message. Could it be a distress transponder? We'll research that. Construction ship can build a mining station up for this quite nice planet. Once it's done that, it can move to there. Get ready to build an energy station there because we're already at only plus two. Abandoned life pod was detected in close orbit of Bunda 8. It is covered in scorch marks, presumably from when the pod mothership exploded. Preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. The crew of the ISS Trum SR managed to open the pod, revealing the withered remains of an, a reptilian alien clad in a resplendent uniform. Clutching in his claws was a small picture of another individual from the same race, possibly a mate or revered leader. And we get some society science points for that. I 
It's going to be since my unit. So I've got 12 months before I uh, get some unity and then can start showing you that kind of stuff. Administration on Nazira has received science officer oh, Toba Hassadra's report on the alien remnants with some apprehension. Leaves in question are now widely to be are now widely considered to be definitive proof of unknown forces having been active in the galaxy. Though some prominent Krillian thinkers reject this in favour of identifying the traces as freak geological formations or the results of curious natural phenomena. I like the fact that you get a slightly different contact report depending on who you meet first, whether it's a fallen empire or a peer or an alien life form, an unintelligent alien life form. I say unintelligent and uncivilized is, is that the best word? The Voltwam Star Assembly. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient civilization on Bunda 6. It must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifact. From what they've been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens, who call themselves the Voltorm Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length, that communicated with each other, primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. So it looks like my precursors are going to be the Voltorm in this game. Never completed their precursor train, uh, chain. So we'll see if I do this time. Completed the Cybrex one and the Erasian one. I've done that one as well. The guys who got wiped out by a plague. And we're down to plus one energy credit, so that plus three is going to be a boon. Uh, and we found an anomaly on Bunda 2, signs of an activity by an ancient precursor civilization. In my last game I got it quite quickly, uh, last game was a Cybrex and I found the homeworld quite quickly. Uh, shame it was miles away from my empire. So I got there and I got the bonus for being the first to discover it, but I couldn't claim their old home system, which is a shame because it's a really good system. Just queue up a couple of survey orders for these guys. An ancient Voltum observatory has been found. On the surface of Bunda 2, the Bunda system is fairly distant from the region of space that the Voltum originated and this facility appears to have been primarily used for the observation of the Ron stars. We've gone over the observatory surviving data but there are no clues on exactly what the Voltum was searching for in their observations. So it says that it's quite far away from their home space. Uh, I need level 5 scientists so it's got to be a while before I can do that one. I'm going to change this fleet order so that uh, crawling on the planet's face. Anthropodical herds. Let's research them. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to do the planets closest to me first because they quite often have oh, more ancient precursor activity in Bunda. They quite often have hop habitable planets. I got there in the end. Um, I'm going to in my space so I'm going to get some more energy from there before I start building more mining stations. Well, the planet is prohibitively irradiated, at least one advanced form of life flourishes on Sam Duran 4, anthropological in nature. Science officer Toba Malus reports that the creatures exhibit impressive collective decision-making skills and that outside stimulus may spur them to greater evolutionary heights. Something to keep in mind for the future. So, Rochoid. Tomb world preference. Great stuff. And irradiated tomb world habitability and lethal lifespan. So, Bunda 1 was home with a small Voltorm 
of course, where they traded with several neighbouring civilizations. At some point, the trade post appears to have been converted into a religious mission, but the Voltum attempted to convert a visiting alien merchants to their philosophy. Trade ceased shortly afterwards, and the planet was abandoned. So these guys, Rothschilds, I've not seen them before. Um, they look pretty cool, so... Um, if I eventually unlock the ability to uplift alien races, I'll be able to make these guys sentient and absorb them into my empire. Because I'm xenophobic, they will be absorbed into my empire as slaves, or at the very least the caste system, probably full slaves. Um, they look pretty cool because if I uplift them, they'll keep their tomb world preference, which basically means they can inhabit any planet in the galaxy with very little problems. They get a 60% inhabitability to everything apart from Tomb Worlds, which they have an 80% on. Plus, they live for bloody ages. The species has evolved to thrive in environments subject to extremely high levels of background radiation. And they're right on my front door, so that's pretty cool. And at the absolute very least, I can do some research there, which is cool. Oh, actually, oh. So, traditions available. So this is a new feature in Utopia, if you haven't yet seen it. Um, and uh, there's a new resource called Unity, which is collected from various buildings. It scales based on your number of pops and planets. So the more pops and planets you have, the more Unity you need to unlock your next tradition. Um, and traditions change the way you play. Um, so there's different fields. You get an effect for adopting it. Um, so for example, in the expansion field, new colonies will start with an additional population. Um, you then have to pick from the five different things that are in it. Each one of them gives a different advantage. Colonization fever means that capital buildings produce additional unity, for example. And when you finish it, you get a finishing effect. So in this one, you get an additional two core sector systems. Plus with Utopia, every time you finish one of these, tra one of these tradition fields, you unlock an ascension perk, which gives you an even bigger advantage, something that can be pretty incredible for your civilization. So it's all really cool stuff. Um, given that we're probably going to be playing quite a wide empire, we're going to be conquering a lot of people, getting a lot of populations and a lot of planets, it means we're not going to be generating unity that quick, uh, which means that we're probably not going to be getting loads of these ascension perks. But they're really useful, um, in particular for, for people who play tall, who have a small focused empire. They can rise to these quite quickly, and, and these can help keep them competitive with the, the larger empires. So expansion is an obvious start. You start with getting an additional population for every planet that you populate. Uh, plus you get some cool things in there, like um, a colonization if you get additional uni, so I'm at unity, so I can keep that... Uh, that trend of unlocking traditions going. Uh, effect on increased tradition cost by number of colonies gets reduced. So again, it helps keep that snowball effect going. And new life increases the speed in the colonies develop. Plus at the end of it, you get extra core systems. At the minute I've only got three core systems, it'll take my core systems to five. On the other hand, Domination is really good if you're going to have lots of vassals, and I might end up with lots of vassals. Supremacy is pretty good if you conquer people, I think, or if you want to have a big military. Yeah, it is. I've not followed that one before. Nevertheless, I am going to go for expansion. Because expansion's useful to everyone. In fact, most of these, most of these perks are useful to everyone. That's one of the benefits. Um, but also because I've got the expansion one, it means even if I do get a big bigger, I'll still generate unity reasonably consistently once I've got those first couple of perks. Uh, so it's really gonna pay for itself in the long term. That guy's now ready. So we're going to build a power plant. Construction ship's still hard at work. So let's build another corvette. Keep that military expansion going. Sooner or later we're going to bump into people that we're going to want to kill. Um, 
minus the trade post. Um, I didn't check the trade post when it came up, but it needs a sign to give a four or higher, as most of these anomalies do. So it's going to take a while before I get around to dealing with the precursors. But knowing that I've got two on my back door is very cool. I don't think the computer actively pursues them anymore either. So the AI is not going to come and snipe those from underneath me like they used to do in the old days. Build another mining station, but I'll go back to my home system, I'll max out my home system before I build more in Bunda. But it's cool that I've got another 8 minerals there just waiting to be unlocked. Already got plus 19, which is a pretty decent start. So that pop's going to be there in a month. Ready to work the sign and the energy network. researched one of some exquisite craters but something breaks the visual uniformity in one of the larger ones we'll research that see what's going on shoot yet. So let's take a look at these planets. So that one kind of sucks. It's got a lot of tile blockers and it's small anyway. I've got this one over here that's in the system with the Rotroids. That's a bit better. It doesn't have great uh, tile bonuses um, I have to say. Oh, Crater and Creston was likely the result of a regular meteor impact. The complex part of what a waste of time. So several patterns are not the result of an impact, but a collision. One between an asteroid and some unspecified orbital installation or ship of alien make. That's the circuits and dust modifier, plus nine physics research. That's pretty awesome, plus nine physics research. Uh, research is complete, unlocks heritage sites. Uh, we'll go for this because it gives us uh, plus one monthly influence. Actually, I'm thinking I want to colonize this. Um, it doesn't have great tile modifiers, but it does have a lot of growing space. It does mean I'm going to have to save up for a bit so I can afford the... how much? 350. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll speed up to fastest. And there's not much to do in this early stage other than continuously survey those systems. Make sure they've got their orders queued up. Because we know without a doubt that there's a thriving biosphere that's not something unique to the home world, both the scientists and the public are eager to learn more about the forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. 
So we've been asked to focus our planetary service on how to build life-bearing worlds, which is cool. We'll do that commendable initiative. I mean, we need to grow, we need to expand. That's what it's all about. Let's research these ruins that we found on Sinastra 2. It's a shame we just left the system while I was waiting to do that, because we're running on mega speed. I'm going to slow down one now because we're just about to get what we need to be able to populise this world. So I'm going to build a colony ship, we're going to plunk it down. Oh yeah, we'll plunk it down there. So our first colony ship is under construction. And that means I can once again focus on building up and whatnot. Uh, we get some research gain because we found what appears to us to be an abandoned amusement park. Well, hey. Aha. Uh -huh. We can come with some aliens. We can flag them as the Alpha Menace until we can learn more about them. Our species is in uproar. So space meters, and they are more powerful than my fleet. So we'll not be messing with them at the moment. But we know they're there. And we'll kill them when we're ready. Now it's cool that that research station is within our space. I'm going to go and grab it. because that's a hell of an early game boost. That's gonna more than double my physics research output. It's gonna be a 150% increase on my physics research output. Which I can hopefully leverage into some military technologies to boost the power of my fleet. How's the surface growth going? I kind of feel like I want to get the Autocathon monument and then boost that so that I've got some some good unity production because it's going to be tough later to expand unity wise so I want to get as good a start to that as possible move through the initial phases of the expansion tree so what we got, um, Cerama Metal Armor, an improved spaceport, or powered exoskeletons. Powered exoskeletons will further increase my minerals and my army damage, so I'm gonna go for that. Even though I'm not really interested in pursuing the robotics path. Ooh, I like this one. So that's a small object in rapid orbit around the star. We're gonna try and find out what it is. Decent event sometimes. So I'm gonna build that monument there and prep for that population. We've got a new tradition, so I'm gonna pick the colonization fever one so we get additional unity from colonization buildings. It's gonna take us from 96 to 131 was it? Or was it 96 months to 38 months? Whatever it was, it was a, it was a, it was a hell of an increase. Can't afford another Corvette just yet. Right after this pops built, we're definitely going to want the next one to go on with that food tile. 
to increase the level of food. Food now a global resource rather than a planet-wide resource. So you've got a stockpile. My stockpile is quite small. You can change stockpile in your policies. Um, but what you produce over and above your stockpile dictates how fastly you populate, how fast your population will grow. So distinct advantages there. Um, more precursor activity happening in the Shasharim system. Looks like that colony ship's just arriving here too. going to take approximately 25 months for that colonization to be complete. Small Voltorum satellite was found in orbit of Shashran Via. It had been set up to continuously repeat a message until its power source drained millions of years ago. We saw the transmitter array but could only recover a small portion of the transition. Transmission. The main purpose of the satellite was apparently to preach the dominant Voltorum philosophy philosophy to neighboring civilizations. The message speaks of the need to disconnect and embrace true existence. Whatever that means. In the situation log, that is a level five one. So I've been recording for a wee while now. Um, so I'm gonna stop and call it a day. Oh, yeah, you'll see that. You'll see that I was checking that because I forgot that I've got this set to record the screen output and not the game. So you probably saw me go check how long I've been recording there. Uh, nevertheless, I am going to call it a day for this episode. It's been a slow one. It has been a slow start. I'm looking forward to moving out a bit further from here and meeting the aliens that I'm going to crush. They're probably not going to like me. I might even have a very brief first contract war. That could be fun. Uh, military's coming along well. I hope you will come back and join me for the next episode. I'll see you then.